Introducing the story of Trojan Warriors, part one, The Vision, by Michael Clark, the director. And brother, David Clark. David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am David Clark, I just told you, I'm your brother. <laughs> and you're my older brother, but I became a Christian 30 years ago. And we are here, and this documentary that we're about to do is the beginning of a series. A series of what? Trojan Warriors, we call it. So this book, with this book, is the first in a series. The, the book is the first in a series, but the, the documentary we're doing now is um, about what it's all about, really, what Trojan Warriors are about. Okay, um, it was last year that you came to the Philippines for the first time. Yeah. What made you come to the Philippines? Well, it was the fact that you had become a Christian after ah, many years. It was the recognition yes. that after your praying yes. for 30 years, that you found out that your prayers have been answered? Well, I'm not saying I prayed for you for 30 years. Obviously, I prayed for you, but the reality of it is this. I was converted 30 years ago. Christ actually spoke to me, no doubt about it, and set me on a mission. Well, I seem to remember, David, that um, after trying to explain about now how I was uh, set up for a crime I didn't commit, and you in the Western world felt that there's no smoke without fire, so you rejected me. You think I was bluffing or spoofing? Well, no, I didn't reject you. I felt you actually deserved getting sent away for what you were doing. But the fact is, I learned. That I didn't believe you was given the charge, but I thought you deserved what you got because I felt your lifestyle was immoral. Okay. It was the. It, uh, what led you to me was the release of Sonny Wilson, who got acquitted off death penalty. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. suffering. Yeah. Now this is a man. That's it. This is That's a man, story. Sonny Wilson. Yeah. Now he's my dear friend. Here. Right, yeah. He came to you with a message. Yeah, yeah. I asked him personally to go yeah, to you yeah. with an MBI yeah. report, yeah. which is in this That's book, right. yeah, yeah. that categorically says that I was not guilty. This proves that with a judicial system, my case would have been thrown out of court. However, we're not here to say anything about the judicial system. I'll tell you what happened. Right? He yes. came to me, he actually ran me off on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day? 1999. Yeah. He actually had come out of the prison on the 23rd, oh, I remember. flew back to England and ran me off on Christmas Day. Yes. He said he got me a Christmas present. A present? Yeah. The news that you, the confirmation, had evidence that you were innocent of the charge. That was the MBI report he got. And it was. It was then you, how did he get you? Did he bring well, he it came to, to me, him and his wife came. So he came down from Dover in Kent. He stayed with me for several days. So it's a two hour drive, he came all yeah, the way down yeah. on Christmas to give you this good news. Yeah, yeah. Just after Christmas he came. How so. did you feel when you were read? Honoured, I was honoured to receive him because I knew that he was... No, you yeah. missed the question. How did you respond to reading the MBR report? That well, the truth of the matter was, Michael, it's such a long report, I couldn't understand it. Right? And I didn't respond until six months later, when I finally realised what it was telling so me. So you digested it? Yes, it took me time. So it's another world? You yeah, I couldn't comprehend. So, so, okay, let's cut a long story short. After six months, you began to get inspired. Yes, I was To come inspired, to yeah. the Philippines, to see well, the reality. Let, let, let me tell you what happened, right? You had written to me that you were interested in Christian things, and I actually just put it on the back burner. I wanted to see the evidence. You wrote to me telling me how depressed you were, you didn't like, can't face a future, and all of this, that, and that, right? And I thought, well, God is actually going to deal with you. Yes. Now, a year later, you write to me and told me that you actually read Ben Mark and Lloyd Jones' books on spiritual warfare, and joy unspeakable, full of glory, and you had read C.S. Lewis. Lewis's book called Their Christianity. And that was the book that Sonny Wilson left with Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when I saw the change in your letters, I knew that you had become a Christian. So I wrote back immediately and told you, instructed you to get baptised. I actually rang up the newspaper, Miller, well, you, Lizzie Miller. Well, can, can I tell you something? When your letter was in transit to me, my letter was in transit to you. Right. So well, I've already yeah. formulated the baptism. Baptism, baptism because I was inspired. I couldn't, I was dragged to the water, water. tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Lucas tried to say that, well, we can do it next. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had to be done. Yeah. I had to tell the Lord. Yeah. I was an ambassador. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got 25 other people. Yeah. And we asked him for Pastor Lucas to improvise. Yeah. And it was a wonderful celebration. So that is the, that's actually the baptism there. Yes. In the oil drum. Yeah.
Now, why was it in the oil drum, you tell me? Because at the time, 45 gallons. The actual right? baptism, what, what do you call it, where you get baptized? Dip, dip them, immersed. No, dip. no the actual the place. trough, a baptismal pool. A pool. A river will do. We, this church or Horse water centre always borrows one over the other side of the wall. Right, yeah. Now, this is a, a, a large compound, 12 hectares, divided into two sections. Now, at the time, there was gang warfare. So, it was always put off. We can't do it. We can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? Just do when it. I remembered scripture. I told you. The man, the Enoch, I forget, yeah. in the Bible, what, hinders me for what stopped stop him me? Yeah. And he jumped in, and I think that water was stagnant and dirty. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. That's like the water of George. Right. Yeah. If, if, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It can be a sewage tank. No, it, jump matter, it, it was just a symbolic. More than a symbolic, I had to tell the Lord that I'm a follower. So, as a result of that, I told Desi Miller, I published my book. Desi Miller, I remember she's the one of the editors yeah. from the Southampton newspaper. I had, meanwhile, been writing this book, right, and I didn't have the ending. In fact, the book was initially the title I thought, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Mm. It's like, well, it's like the book of Acts. Yeah. It ended on chapter 28. Yeah. And I believe 29... It was opened again. We're the ones opening it. We're 29, Acts 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living, okay. living okay. Testament. Right. Okay, so you came to the Philippines yes. and you decided to come with your dear friend, or should we say Gordon. our friend, yeah, Gordon. Gordon Smith, who I've known, me. I've known him for 40 years. And, and when I used to know him, he was an old man, in my eyes. He wasn't really. In my eyes, he was an old man. But when he came, and he was always a Christian, he was, he was preaching, and he had his own he, his own funny way. But I wasn't a Christian, but he was a good engineer. He, he, in, fact, he in fact was praying for me the night of my conversion at Mrs. Knight's home. Oh. Okay. Anyway, when Gordon Smith, what well, I was informed by you that Gordon would like to accompany you to the Philippines, wonderful, wonderful. In fact, but when I saw him, I didn't believe it was know. Gordon. No. Where's my brother? There he is. There's my brother. <laughs> There's Gordon. Hey, my goodness. Excuse me. Take a picture of Gordon. Carry on. Oh, what is it? What is it? My long lost brother. And that's my true brother. He turned. He looked a lot yeah, younger, younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was jolly. Yeah, yeah. And he was because he's a pastor. And, 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 and then he teacher. told me all about his his wife, and he's found a lovely wife, and his house clean, which I can't believe. Anyway, the 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 we had a lovely uh, mission uh, last year. We had a few problems, teething problems. But while you was here, David, I think we decided. And, well, you saw there was a problem. The problem was that Pastor Lucas, you felt you felt. Well, not, no, 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 not quite right. No, what happened was Pastor Lucas invited me, and Pastor Kim, Reverend Kim from, Kim. from Korea, yeah. right, was a missionary here, had in fact invited me to preach in various places Angeles City Jail, along the ah. City Jail, Cities of Kavit, in Curzon City. Oh, we went around churches preaching and teaching the gospel. Okay. Right. Now, the fact is, when we came to this prison, Right, Gordon and I were overwhelmed with the amount of Christian work that was going on. That there were hardened, notorious criminals being converted to Christ. Yeah, I've never seen it before, like it anywhere when, where I've been. Okay. And when you found out that, 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 that Pastor Reverend, Lucas, Reverend Lucas, yeah. Pete Dangatan Jr. was an ex-prisoner. Yeah, 1995. Yeah. And he, with no money, yeah. decided to found a to theological centre yeah, yeah. on the doctrines of Christ. Of grace, yeah. Not of man. Of Christ, yeah. That. Yeah. Which inspired me. Yeah. I'll tell you something, David. For three years, I devoured every book in this prison, yeah. paperback. When I come to finding no more books, I ask Pastor Lucas if I can library. digest his library. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Michael, this library is yours. Yeah. And I digested it. And I couldn't follow their teachers because right. it was all taglish. That's 50-50. Right. Yeah. So I used to have time with Pastor Andy and Pastor Lucas. Pastor Andy is, is he's one of his associate. Teachers, he's a head teacher, isn't he? He's a head teacher and associate pastor. He's been here for 20 years. So I did my own study. And then I realized that the teachings were 99% sound. I'm saying 99% yeah. because I disagree on some, some issues. Yeah. The book, unfortunately, the Filipinos, bless the heart, they read English, 
They understand it, but sometimes they cannot comprehend. Most of the books that have been written are in English. I'm fortunate I've been blessed with an education. I can read it. Um, so when I've been expounding these books, I was open. Then I realised that the, the two true doctrines are the two. Can we talk about that in a minute, Michael? You're you appreciate it. You certainly yeah, can. Yeah, let's, let's get back to the mission we're talking yes. about. Right? Look, when we came here, okay, um, I saw this great, great work, and I think I was since moved at the same time as you, and I said to you, Michael, I want to invite these men to write their testimonies in a book. And you announced and requested oh, I a commission that you asked them. At the same time as he came to me, you yeah, spoke yeah. the word. So what did you tell them? You well, asked. Well, 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 I, well, I, well, I, well, I actually said, I said, We've, we've, had a, we've had a meeting. We've right, reached right. to hundreds here. And I said, we went to church, compound, right. churches here, and there were hundreds of criminals. Well, what Christ. happened was, we, we had a little meeting, as we always do, morning or afternoon, and we said, we're going to write a book. In other words, it's a follow-on for conversion on this lady, David. This is going to be a joint effort between myself and David. David is the author, because I realise that if I'm connected by being an author, it won't carry so much make. However, I announced, I was giving uh, some words of encouragement, and I announced that we have decided to write the first of a series of books, and David came up with the name Trojan Warriors. Horse, War Trojan Horse, but Trojan Warriors. <coughs> so then, <coughs> in order to have impact, Gordon Smith expounded on Revelations 11-12, yeah. I believe it is, by the, by the, you can quote the scripture, David. Well, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Right. So what I thought was, if we can get a hundred testimonies, testimonies of, of warriors declaring Jesus is the Christ yeah. and their testimony, that will be the key to setting the prisoners. And this too, I believe we've been sent to you. To encourage you too, para para Señor, to put your testimonies in writing. Comply with Michael's suggestion request. So I believe God willing. to set him the prisoners free. free. Now people here misunderstand. They think it's prison. The whole world is in prison. Absolutely. It's in bondage. Yeah. But this this picture was inspired to me one night. I drafted it up and I went to Kulai. Kulai is the cultural artist centre in the Philippines in, in the prison. new bit of prison. Immediately I was directed to one man who knew exactly what I wanted. Within one month this picture behind me, which is a large version of this, came up exactly. I sent it to David, he was jumping for joy. All he could say was thank you. Yeah. Let me tell 